So it is very nice to have people from all around the world together this morning for this event, which is entitled Building Partnership for Better Data for the SDGs, the Global Network of Data Officers and Statisticians. So um, as you probably have already noticed, if you looked at the program, I'm neither Francesca Perucci nor Yongyi Min. Um, I'm Stefan Schweinfest. I'm the director of the UN Statistics Division, and it's my pleasure to play the following role with you to this morning. I will moderate um, about halfway through this event and speak a few welcome words, and um, and uh, then I'll hand it over to my wonderful colleague, colleague Yongyi, who will guide you to the rest uh, of the event. Um, I heard the other day a wonderful expression uh, that is called global virtual meeting hygiene and that has to do something with your mute buttons. So it is very helpful if those people who speak actually unmute and those who do not speak mute themselves and right now I was hearing somebody typing ferociously in the background so it would be great uh, if the non-speakers mute and uh, the others unmute. Um, also in terms of uh, etiquette uh, and how we do this after the, 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 the speeches and so we will of course have uh, opportunity for your questions that should be interactive so you please use the chat box for uh, uh, writing your questions. So let me um, say a little bit of what this is today. This is part of the 52nd session of the United Nations Statistical Commission. And from that number, I'm a numbers person. I'm the director of the statistics division. 52nd session, you, you can hear already that sounds very scary. So uh, the, the statistical commission has a long history. It's been around literally since the beginning of the United Nations. And with the formal session, which is now annual, which guides the, the United Nations statistics and data program, uh, through the chief statisticians of all the member states. Together with that, we always have also a, a number of side events, and this today is one of those side events, of course, because we are having online and virtual meetings this year. Uh, the side event is also virtual, which is a big opportunity. Also, every crisis is an opportunity because we can get so many people to the table, and that is precisely the philosophy of this network that we are bringing together in this network and in this dialogue this morning, National Statistical Office, UN agencies and UN country teams. I'm, I always like to think of that configuration as a triangle. And I think the dialogues, the bilateral dialogues in this tri along, uh, the tri uh, tri uh, triangle have always been strong. But bringing all together, country teams, UN agencies, and National Statistical Office is, is fairly new. And the network that we have been facilitating um, is the platform to do this. And today we want to present the network and we want to discuss topics such as what is the role of all of us? What are our comparable advantages? Um, and how can we as a network share knowledge and support our common goal, which is clearly to strengthen national statistical, and I'm deliberately saying not only statistical, but national data architectures. And I'm using the wide word architecture because it's not only statistical offices. It is actually many partners, even inside a government, that have to support uh, a good data ecosystem. So it is official partners and private partners. So it's a partnership already at the national level under the leadership of the National Statistical Office. And that we refer often to as the National Statistical System or even the National Data System because it's broader than statistics. There are elements of geospatial information also in there and big data that is the other data providers, even private data providers, universities and academia are part of that national coalition. Um, supporting a national information architecture. And of course, we as the United Nations Statistics Division 
have been working on this uh, for many, many years, and so have our partners in the UN agencies who have all the su subject matter knowledge. Mark, who will speak, bookend this event, Mark Harewood, at the end of this um, um, uh, event. From UNICEF, of course, is the expert in all data and statistics that are relating to, to, to the broad spectrum of children. So we have been working together and now there are the national uh, presence of the United Nations, the data, uh, the country teams and uh, the uh, resident coordinator system. And I think bringing all of us together as a professional online community, which is also a little bit of the result of the United Nations development reform, it, with the intention of better coordinating, sharing knowledge, sharing ideas, sharing problems, but sharing also more importantly, sharing solutions, um, is a novel idea. And we wanna talk about this, how this is working so far. We have created this network in October 2020, so it's not that old. Uh, on the 20th of October, to be precise, which is a big day for us because every five years we celebrate World Statistics Day. So in 2020, one of the big uh, events was the launch of this global network of data officers and statisticians. And uh, we must have been doing something wrong because I find it pretty scary in a way because over a thousand people have already signed up to this. And so we must be organizing some good party somehow because we did not force, I can tell you, we did not force anybody to join. Everybody joined deliberately. So we must be something right, doing right. So I think there is a need to come together, but it is also something new and we can create it together. Perhaps we now have to move to the next stage and define the themes that we want to work on and perhaps define subgroups in this wonderful network where the people and modalities, uh, how we can exchange information. And that is exactly the point of our discussion today. And we have really interesting people to talk to us. Uh, from all of the stakeholder groups, from the country uh, teams, from the resident coordinator uh, mechanism, from our office, uh, from the UN system agencies and from the national statistical offices. So we will hear all of those perspectives and hopefully have a good discussion of what this is and even more importantly, what this can be. So thank you very much for everybody for joining us this morning and thank you for my to my team uh, under Francesca Yongi's leadership and Alex Sandro's leadership to, uh, of organizing this event and then let's move right in and it's my pleasure to introduce and welcome as a first speaker Madame G. Jeop Son who is the regional director for Europe and Central Asia uh, located in Istanbul, as I learned this morning, I was about to say warm Istanbul, but she told me it's snowing there also. So, Madame Son from the United Nations Development Coordination Office team, please, the floor is yours to share some of your perspectives and ideas of how you look at this global uh, network. <clears throat> So uh, thank you very much uh, for giving uh, uh, the DCO this opportunity. Uh, before I proceed, I just want to make sure that you can hear me okay? Yeah, okay, great. We can hear you uh, very well and see you very well. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> okay. great. Uh, so thank you very much once again uh, for uh, having uh, me and the DCO uh, in this uh, side event. Uh, given that I am surrounded by uh, data and statistical experts, I'm gonna feel a little bit, I have to say that I feel a little bit intimidated or presumptuous to talk about uh, uh, this topic. So maybe the better thing is that I, uh, <clears throat> uh, 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 I, I start my presentation with a layman's perspective of why uh, data and uh, statistical work is so important for advancing the 2030 agenda. And then I can talk about uh, how accurate, reliable, timely, and disaggregated data can improve the quality of the new analytical and planning instruments, uh, namely uh, the country common assessments, 
uh, and the UN Sustainable Development Cooperation Framework, uh, as well as the voluntary national review that the governments uh, lead. Uh, so having a quality CCA and uh, a cooperation framework uh, isn't a panacea to all the challenges that we have. Uh, will certainly uh, help us uh, make some concrete uh, steps in uh, leaving no one behind. Uh, finally, uh, I will wrap up uh, with the vital role that uh, all of you play, and more importantly, uh, the significance of precisely this uh, network uh, in furthering the assessment advancement of the SDGs at the uh, country level. Uh, so uh, why is data so important? Um, Many of you, given that you are data experts, uh, may have uh, read this book by Hans uh, Rosling. Uh, he wrote this book uh, together with his son and uh, daughter-in-law uh, to measure ignorance uh, systematically. He was frustrated with the uh, ignorant views of people and uh, wanted to refute them uh, with a fact-based uh, uh, worldview. Essentially, for people to be much better informed with uh, and not uh, with the hearsay or perceptions. So then uh, the question is, what constitutes a fact? So I actually, before this uh, uh, presentation, I looked up the dictionary. So according to the dictionary definition, uh, facts are those uh, proved to be true, uh, those that can be measured, observed, and proven. Uh, they rely on accurate, reliable, timely, disaggregated data without bias, or skewed views. So it's uh, telling what it is, the way it is. No pluses and no minuses. Uh, it is uh, painting uh, the picture as is and telling the story the way it is. Uh, one way of uh, summarizing factfulness uh, is about giving evidence with substantiated and verified data. Uh, and this isn't to say that data cannot be manipulated or packaged differently. I mean, we know too well that this can uh, easily happen. But we also know the power of data. So uh, uh, why is data in the UN system uh, and uh, also with the governments that we work with so important now? Uh, the Agenda 2030 is a development vision uh, both the member states and the UN agreed to deliver. Unfortunately, uh, 2020 was a year with the pandemic, uh, which severely reversed the gains we have made and time is running out uh, as we have less than a decade uh, to action on the SDGs. Uh, we have to build back better, faster, and stronger to attain the SDGs for all people everywhere to be out of poverty by 2030. So clearly there is a urgency uh, to action. So accelerating uh, our collective uh, efforts to support the countries to attain uh, the SDGs uh, cannot take place without knowing who are those left behind where they are and what their needs and priorities are. So in order for us to know their names, their ages, their gender, we need to have data. And behind that number, there's a name and identity. Uh, having this information, of course, is pivotal for both the government and the UN to determine the scope and nature of services that need to be provided to, to lift them out of poverty and remove uh, their vulnerabilities. Having this uh, evidence-based information substantiated with data will enhance our understanding of policy gaps. And it's going to uh, help uh, identify overlapping, contradictory, and inconsistent policies, but more importantly, uh, find right solutions. And I'm gonna uh, uh, share uh, with you uh, an example of a country where I worked uh, about 15 to 20 years ago. Uh, and I'm not going to mention the country, but in this country, uh, many children suffer from uh, brain damage uh, due to iodine deficiency. Uh, in the beginning, uh, because of conflicting data generated by Ministry of Education, Statistical Bureau, there was a belief that this problem uh, was not of a scale the government needs to pay attention to, especially the current central government. Uh, and by UNICEF, uh, together with others, then launched a massive campaign uh, and collected data from the neighboring countries and triangulated this data with a number of private companies producing salt that contained iodine. So I don't want to go through the details, but to make the long story short, uh, the government ended up uh, legislating, a, a, well, passing a regulation 
uh, mandating the salt producing companies to include iodine, particularly those uh, that are being uh, used for school meals. The point is that uh, with accurate, reliable, and verified data, a right solution can be found. Now, these kids uh, are almost 20 years older, and they are the ones who are shaping uh, this country's uh, policies now and the country's future. So, um, with the uh, Agenda 2030, uh, the UN uh, launched uh, at the same time uh, transformative actions, uh, both at the country and regional levels. And I think this is what Stefan you were talking about earlier uh, when you were uh, introducing me and also the UN system, the reform UN system. At the country level, uh, and coordinators. As the uh, representatives of the uh, Secretary General, uh, we also have uh, reinvigorated uh, country teams to collectively deliver on the SDGs uh, in support of the national. Country team, I use the and planning instrument, uh, the UN Development Cooperation Framework, uh, to analyze the country context and to identify priorities areas that the UN family can better position uh, itself in the country. So you are the ones who analyze this data, and I don't need to tell you what you do, and ensure uh, key findings uh, to be incorporated into the CCA and the cooperation framework. And you also help uh, establish the baseline uh, and identify relevant uh, SDG targets and indicators, uh, which are essential part of the uh, results monitoring framework uh, to keep track of how we are uh, progressing. Uh, voluntary national review, of course, is an additional tool that we can use uh, in identifying policies and institutions uh, that can be strengthened, again, based on evidence-based uh, data. And all of these uh, help uh, attain the sustainable development goals and monitor progress. At the uh, regional level, uh, one of the five uh, reform recommendations focuses on consolidating uh, existing capacities uh, around data and statistics uh, to be led by DESA and uh, regional com uh, economic commissions. Uh, given that we have just launched this uh, foundations and uh, some of which we will uh, have more to share uh, later on. But the main point that I'm trying to convey is that uh, data is uh, given top attention both at the country and regional levels uh, through this uh, reform uh, that uh, has uh, kind of uh, restructured and uh, redefined the functions of the whole UN system. So let me uh, end uh, my presentation by underpinning uh, the pivotal role that you all play as data officers, economists, and uh, statisticians. Uh, I believe uh, you are aware that your capacities are a vital asset for improving policy and program coordination and coherence, both at the, uh, at the horizontal level, at the country uh, with the different thematic areas, but also vertically uh, starting at the community level to um, the national level, all the way to uh, country capitals and New York. So for instance, uh, when a decision is made uh, to decouple climate change from economic growth, can you provide the clear evidence-based information to help the government and the country team to better understand its impact and help make strategically prioritized and sequenced decisions? And they have to be, again, uh, based on uh, substantiated, substantiated uh, verified uh, information, which is underpinned by uh, data. Given that uh, we all work in a very uh, highly networked and fastly evolving environment, especially with uh, artificial intelligence becoming much more predominant form of uh, generating and sharing information. What would be really critical is for you to form these uh, strategic partnerships to explore new types of uh, data sources and tools for sustainable development. So for instance, uh, can all of you in partnership with others help uh, realize the UN family's uh, data potential uh, everywhere? Uh, the UN system, uh, working together with the government, civil society, and the private sector, uh, can collectively discover, identify, and scale solutions, like the ones that I mentioned earlier. Uh, investors 
we can also direct more resources to uh, where it is needed. Uh, with the reliable, timely and accurate data, we can also do many uh, dif uh, things differently. So for instance, help uh, communities fight uh, COVID-19 and prepare uh, better for the next uh, pandemic. Um, uh, uh, another example is mitigating the impact of natural disasters uh, because we know the scale and the scope and uh, the level uh, and uh, better prepare uh, before they unfold. Uh, and to also protect global uh, biodiversity and oceans and save the uh, planet for us and for the future. So uh, supporting uh, data innovation at scale is a uh, worthy investment and uh, establishing the, uh, the, the UN families and beyond a global network of this uh, uh, data uh, experts and the labs uh, uh, is an incredibly important uh, step. Uh, data can uh, help make better decisions, deliver stronger support to people and planet, and of course, uh, help unlock uh, countries' uh, full potential. And this is exactly uh, what we are trying to achieve. So underpinning all of this uh, work is the leadership uh, and partnership from all of you. So when the country team can effectively support uh, national statistical systems and the colleagues, uh, we can accurately look to monitor and deliver quality report on SDG indicators, targets, and goals. Ultimately, as a result of all of that, we will not have left anyone behind. But let me thank you very much for this opportunity and back to you. Thank you so much, Ms. Son, for uh, for this inspiring uh, talk at the very beginning and for being with us. And let me assure you, um, there were uh, uh, some tiny little problems with your image uh, at uh, some moments during your presentation, but your message and voice uh, was coming through loud and clear. So that is wonderful. And um, I always like it. Of course, it's nice uh, if others say that data are important. We say that all the time, but it's our trait. I had that actually also in my speaking notes, but I thought, let me uh, trust that my colleague uh, from the other side, more from the user side, will actually make that pitch. And I think that worked out very well. Uh, thank you also for giving us a concrete example based on your experience, how a partnership in a country context was able uh, to address a very specific and solve, a spe it seems, a specific problem. So I think that's exactly the spirit of, with which we come to the table here. Partnerships, 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 getting the right people to talk to each other is critical. Thank you also for emphasizing the regional uh, dimension which you are working uh, with right now and that is critically important we are focusing very often on the national and then we have our contribution from the global side but of course the regional dimension and our partners in regional offices and the UN agencies and our regional commissions are critically important and uh, I also thank you for one word that you used investment uh, and as a data person and this is one of my favorite words because I think I'm always trying to make the pitch that it's worth to invest in data it's not a cost an expenditure it is an investment in the infrastructure of a country uh, of the future so thank you for making that point so I look at the participant numbers. We are now over 100. And of course, I like to believe in my dementia as a statistics director that there are thousands on YouTube that I don't even see and know. And they are all interested in data and statistics this morning. So thank you for all of you for being here. And I hope you really take the message that Ms. Son has strongly made. Uh, you are in the lead. Each and everybody who is listening to this today has a role to play. Uh, to move this forward. So uh, the next uh, point on the agenda is my colleague, Mrs. Yong Yi Min, who is my chief of SDG monitoring section in the UN DESA statistics uh, division and who was very instrumental putting this network and this event to the, together. So uh, Yongi is going to make a, a presentation on what the network of data offices is all about. So the floor is yours, Yongi. Thank you very much, uh, Stefan. And uh, 
Thank you for the introduction. So as uh, Stefan uh, said, uh, I'm, my name is Yong Yimin. I work for the UN Statistical Division. Um, so as uh, uh, we, we heard from Ms. Song that mentioned the lack of timely quality, open and disaggregated data uh, are currently severely limiting uh, informed decision making for achieving the SDGs and for uh, the COVID-19 responses. So to meet uh, these data challenges, uh, one way is to try to connect uh, um, statistician, data experts, data scientists, and geospatial information experts uh, around the world together. Next slide, please. Uh, so on 20, October 2020, uh, on the World Statistical Days, uh, the statistical division uh, launched a global network of data officers and uh, statistician. Uh, this is a professional, uh, global professional network uh, for statisticians, uh, data officers, economists, data scientists, and geospatial information experts uh, from the national statistical system. The UN system, including the resident coordinator officers and the UN country team, and the international regional organization, and some key uh, partners, data partners uh, around the world. Uh, it's a facilitated professional uh, online social community uh, hosted uh, on Yammer platform. It aims to facilitate the work of um, the, the UN and the other partners in their support to national governments to build a resilient and a sustainable uh, national data and the information system for the full implementation of the 2030 agenda uh, through collaboration, knowledge sharing, networking, and technical uh, support. As uh, Stefan mentioned, uh, uh, since its launch, the global network uh, has grown to a, a strong uh, global community of uh, 1,200 members currently and uh, uh, over uh, 550 message uh, has been posted on the network uh, and were read uh, by uh, around uh, uh, 50,000 times. Next slide, please. Uh, so look at uh, the, the current uh, demographics of the network. Uh, we have about uh, 650 colleagues from different uh, UN entities. Uh, including 80 colleagues uh, from uh, the resident coordinator officers, uh, about 430 uh, uh, colleagues from the national statistical system from around 88 countries, and uh, more than 100 uh, colleagues from uh, non-UN organizations and from key data partners uh, of uh, um, CSOs and academias. Uh, we hope to, through this uh, uh, event, uh, we can uh, invite more colleagues from National Statistical System and also the UN Resident Coordinator Officer to join. Next slide, please. Um, so the main objectives of the Global Networks is, uh, are to improve coordination and collaboration among peers and uh, organizations and to connect existing but not necessarily well-connected network and initiatives and to provide and share information on capacity building uh, efforts globally. Uh, so we, so we, the what you can do on the network is uh, evolve the, the four states. We, on coordination, the the networks uh, hope to foster, improve the coordination between a national statistical office and the whole national statistical system. And within the regions and through the regional commissions uh, support. Uh, with, between the national statistical system and the UN entities uh, um, and among the UN um, uh, country teams and, and among the different international and regional organizations and in general between also between statistical and geospatial information community. On collaboration, we want to increase uh, collaboration among national statistical office and systems and uh, build uh, new partnerships and foster synergies of the different uh, data partners by offering a tool for discussion, uh, information sharing, and uh, connecting colleagues uh, from all entities at all level. On capacity, capacity development, we want to uh, uh, 
um, build capacity through uh, sharing knowledge and best practices, uh, provide possibility to request and offer support and the training by pools of experts on different topics and from different statistical domains and uh, uh, um, um, announce webinars and other events uh, organically build a knowledge base and the connection. So this through this network, we want to connect existing networks, initiatives and intergovernmental bodies um, and globally connect colleagues anywhere and at any time. So next slide, please. So in the next few slides, I will give a few examples of how the current use case of the global network. Um, the first one is uh, uh, it can be used for knowledge sharing. Uh, for for this one, and uh, one college from the UN Statistical Division share this uh, stack act two, um, and and uh, then the, the second one is we announced the from the chair of the CCSA announced the publication um, of the the COVID uh, uh, related to COVID nineteen. Uh, next slide, please. And in here, you also can find uh, uh, advertisements for job and consultants uh, for uh, colleague and the data expert looking for new opportunities. Uh, here we have a opportunity from UNICEF and currently on the network, uh, there's another temporary uh, st statistician opportunity from the UN Statistical Division. And we also use this network to celebrate uh, a big statistical event such as the World Statistical Day. And currently we use the network uh, to, to share information on all the more than 50 side events of the Statistical Commission. Next slide, please. And we also use the network to announce new publication tools and conduct uh, global consultations. Um, and so this is a, has been used by colleagues around the world. Uh, next slide, uh, slide, please. So in addition to this uh, uh, shared by the members on the network, we also uh, have some facilitated activities. Uh, so we organize a, a, a building strong data ecosystem for SDG webinar series. So for almost each month, except this month, due to uh, the many numbers of the side events of the Statistical Commission. Uh, we also uh, provide trainings on communication for all members of Global Network, uh, um, because I think there's one thing that uh, the data expert and statistics lacking uh, are the communication. So we uh, try to uh, improve the communication on data and uh, um, uh, statistics. Uh, we also offer this my work session uh, to encourage everyone to read and share their work. And also the uh, ask me anything session to answer questions raised by members and uh, proactively point out uh, uh, different resources. And we also have a, a Q and A session, and uh, we had the first Q and A session by uh, Stefan, um, our director, and we're also uh, going to organize a follow up uh, Q and A session uh, with different data experts uh, around the UN and outside the UN. And we also carry out a polls and surveys throughout the, um, uh, the network. And as uh, Stefan mentioned, uh, that uh, we currently try to uh, form different uh, groups. On the network and the, the, the uh, different groups uh, can serve different purposes. They support expert uh, group, uh, uh, task team, uh, interagency expert groups uh, um, to continue their uh, discussions uh, between their regular meetings. Uh, and the, it allows for topic specific and open discussion and also serves a user uh, support forum. So in here you can ask uh, uh, questions um, and uh, get uh, public support and answer on different topic. And uh, it's also support regional discussion actions and uh, uh, um, provide a communication channel between the resident coordinate office, your country team, and uh, the whole um, global statistical uh, community. So currently on the network, we have uh, uh, five, six uh, groups already, one on CEA focal point groups um, and uh, System of Environment and Economic Accounting, and uh, one on machine learning for official statistics. Uh, we have uh, one particular focus on the training for the UN and colleagues, specific training in the UN. 
uh, we have one on population and housing census, and we have another one on transport statistics. So we also encourage uh, the uh, colleague to form groups according to the theme and also based on the regions. Next slide, please. So I just want to highlight some of the, the facilitated events we organized. So in the past, uh, around the building strong um, um, data ecosystem for SDG series, uh, we had uh, uh, like a, so far six, uh, four um, webinars already. And for example, this, um, in November, we have the national data and the metric data platforms. So we invite, uh, uh, we call solution providers and the countries to share their experience on using different uh, data and metadata uh, platforms. Follow up to this webinar, uh, the different uh, uh, country also share more detailed information on the different uh, platforms uh, on the network and provide the uh, uh, rich in resources. Uh, as I mentioned, we have a Q&A session on the 1st um, first February uh, by Stefan. Um, let's discuss the next norm, st statistic, uh, norm for statistics. And we are uh, trying to uh, uh, like uh, plan for the next speakers and line up uh, a, a few of the um, famous statisticians around the world uh, focused on different topics. On training on, on communication, uh, we already um, held one on effective, effective webinars, and we plan to have a creating and maintenance group on the global network. Um, this is going to happen in the middle of March. We also uh, can plan to have communicating in the professional network and communicating data and statistics this is in the pipeline. Uh, so all these uh, webinars and uh, um, uh, trainings uh, are recorded. So if you just join the web, the network now, uh, you still can watch them. Um, and so all these uh, facilitated events uh, um, is a facility by mainly currently by UN SD staff member uh, uh, with uh, a group of key contributors uh, uh, from uh, the our division and a few from uh, the UNICEF colleagues. So it can be expanded soon to other uh, uh, colleagues who want to take a lead in certain topics. Um, next slide, please. So what's the, the future of the next work? Uh, we want to uh, facilitate food collaboration um, between statistician, data scientist, geospatial experts, um, and, and uh, also uh, like among the, the resident coordinator and UN country team staff members. Uh, we want to uh, form a community of practice around data and the statistics. Uh, we want to foster uh, collaboration through the creation of the thematics and regional groups and uh, um, build capacity in identify the fields and improve uh, communication skill of, of the members of the net network. And we also provide the, net the member with uh, uh, essentially training and resource inform environment. Eventually, we want to build a, a organically built knowledge base throughout the network. Next slide, please. Uh, okay. I guess there's a few slides missing, but uh, we provided the link uh, on how to join the network. If you have not joined the global network, uh, please join by following uh, the link we shared uh, at the bottom and the sign up today with your work email address. And we also have the easy to use mobile application uh, for Android and uh, iOS and help you to connect with colleagues anywhere and anytime. We hope that you can use this network to share knowledge on new data solutions and uh, technologies and uh, to improve uh, collaboration and to forge partnerships. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Yonggi, for uh, so passionately presenting the network and not only what it is currently and what it already has done in the very few weeks that it has been active. Uh, and obviously very successful in uh, attracting uh, people. Uh, I look at it as like the statistical forum Romanum 
So that's a place where uh, everybody comes together and discusses what they are interested in. And I th I see that the, the, the chat already uh, um, heating up a little bit and people putting real concrete questions like one from Indonesia on, on small area estimates and d data disaggregation. That's exactly how this is supposed to work. So thank you again to you. And as one of my old bosses once said, no good deed goes unpunished. Uh, so for doing a wonderful job in uh, doing a presentation now and for also, of course, supporting me and the office always with your fantastic work. I mean, everybody should know that you are Mrs. SDG report. Uh, if we do have an annual SDG report at the highest level that goes to the General Assembly, it's mostly because you spend lots of sleepless nights working very, very hard to put the best data from the UN system together to put in front of the General Assembly. So thank you for that and thank you for your presentation and I'm handing over to you the moderating role now for the second part of this event. And thank you everybody for being here. Yeah, thank you very much, Stefan, for your support. So I will take over from here and uh, introduce our excellent uh, panelists uh, for the next uh, uh, discussion. The first uh, panelist uh, we will have uh, uh, Mr. Rashid Hasanova, uh, economist, and uh, Ms. Gula Fatali, uh, the data manager and the results monitor uh, reporting officer from UN resident coordinator officer in Azerbaijan. Um, Rashid and uh, Gula will present their work uh, with the Azerbaijan national government and the National Statistical Office on supporting data and information system for SDG. And particularly, they organized a SDG workshop on data disaggregation uh, in last uh, December. So we'd like to hear from them. Over to you, uh, um, Rashid and uh, Gula. Uh, thank you very much, Yongye, and um, I would also like to greet uh, our panelists and uh, all the participants and uh, feeling very privileged uh, to be part of this session and uh, thank you for the opportunity uh, for us to share our some, some highlights from our work with the State Statistics Committee in Azerbaijan. And um, I would kindly ask you to please uh, put the presentation on. Just a second, we will put the application on. Um, yes, can we go to the uh, second slide, please? Um, so, yes, I think um, everyone here would uh, confirm that the data challenges uh, today, they're not really unique uh, to any country. I mean, most of the challenges we are facing at the country level. Um, so, um, even not the same, but um, most of the challenges are uh, similar, whether it's about the uh, data availability or um, its quality, reliability or disaggregation. So, um, uh, those are all the, the challenges that um, uh, we were facing at the country level and uh, we identified those challenges as a result of some analysis and assessments uh, we have uh, carried out in the uh, in the country so um, that includes the um, final evaluation of UN Azerbaijan partnership framework uh, document the, the previous UNDAF and also the um, common country analysis uh, document but at the same time the government here they also recognized uh, these challenges related to um, data uh, monitoring and reporting in their uh, voluntary national review reports that they are submitting to the high level uh, political uh, forum. So that was uh, an entry level for us um, as a UN office um, uh, in Azerbaijan to um, make the further step of the state statistics committee and um, 
established uh, the joint task force uh, and join our efforts uh, within the framework of this task force uh, to address some of these uh, challenges. So the first task uh, of the task force, uh, it was to uh, complement the already existing um, assessments and analysis we have in our hand um, uh, to look uh, deeper and in detail um, what are the existing mechanisms and the um, uh, processes in regard to SDG uh, monitoring and reporting in the country. So we have done this uh, assessment um, uh, with in-house capacity and also utilized uh, some of the, the corporate guidelines. And uh, But I think the novelty for this assessment was to also uh, bring in um, the user perspective uh, that we did a survey and questionnaire with the development partners and civil society organizations. And um, the assessment, the findings and recommendations of this assessment, they helped us to um, um, to prioritize the uh, work stream and uh, to come up with a joint work plan for this group that we can uh, focus our efforts on um, several concrete uh, directions and activities. Next slide, please. And uh, those areas, um, one of the areas was uh, to, of course, uh, improve production and communication of SDG data at the country level. Uh, the government is um, uh, doing um, a lot of work in this regard. Um, uh, currently, they are producing around 38% of the global SDG indicators. And also, uh, they have established um, a web platform, which is uh, publicly uh, accessible to everyone, and uh, where they're uh, making uh, available the data. Uh, for all SDG indicators, but um, of course uh, now we need to work together to um, to advance the the production of the SDG data and also uh, to. Um, to improve ways how we communicate it. Uh, the other area uh, and the uh, um, work stream is to how we can better disaggregate and um, also cover uh, the, the people that are um, not represented in the um, official statistics. And um, this includes uh, most of the time the vulnerable groups and the people uh, from the grassroots. And um, the other um, uh, area in the work stream uh, is um, to promote the use of alternative and innovative data sources, but at the same time to engage uh, civil society and other non-traditional actors, which is not uh, a current practice in the country um, nowadays. Uh, so of, the work is ongoing and um, of course we cannot cover uh, all the activities that we are doing at the country level. Uh, so that's why I will ask my colleague Rashad to focus on one of the items, which is um, data disaggregation and give you more highlights on uh, what we have done so far in this area. Please, Rashad. Thank you. Good, Thank you. Uh, good morning and good afternoon, colleagues, uh, depending on where you are. Um, thank you for um, inviting us to this uh, very important meeting. So as Gilad mentioned, uh, we decided to uh, concentrate our efforts, uh, take step-by-step -step approach. Uh, can I move to the next slide, please? Um, so the first thing we, uh, we decided to prioritize the uh, data disaggregation, uh, the practices of uh, improving the data disaggregation in the context of Azerbaijan. So as a first step, um, we um, decided to organize an international workshop for SDG data disaggregation, which uh, Yonli and other colleagues uh, kindly participated and contributed, and we thank them for that. It was kind of a, um, a brainstorming session, so to say, um, to understand what other countries in the world are doing to improve the data disaggregation, and all sorts of, um, you know, to understand what, what, what methods are there, uh, what are the low hanging fruits, etc. So to this end, we um, had this two day work, workshop with the statistical committee, um, where we had 18 presenters sessions. And uh, the presenters were coming from very diverse background, as I said, from the, um, they were represented from uh, the UN um, specialized agencies. We had representatives from the government, um, we had represented from Office of, uh, the Statistical Office of um, UK and Kyrgyzstan, <coughs> IFI was there, etc. So um, this basically helped us to uh, get the perspectives on data disaggregation from various levels, from academia, from uh, government in, uh, in, um, offices, etc. So, and we, we tried to cover as broad topics as possible, from the methodology to uh, innovative use of innovative data sources, 
and, 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 and other um, aspects of the data segregation. So once we had this workshop and we heard the experience of other countries, we decided to put together a guidebook for the desegregation of the SDG data. Can I have the next slide, please? And um, so the guidebook um, is in the process of uh, development. Um, we are working with, closely with the joint task force, which includes the state statistical committee as well. It's under the draft. Um, the first draft is almost ready, and we hope to publish it by the end of March. Um, so the, the guidebook will basically, I'm just would like to quickly share in the next minute or so, this, uh, the, the structure of the guidebook will discuss the current state of desegregation, SDG desegregation in Azerbaijan, and identify their challenges and opportunities. And then it will just based on these challenges and opportunities, uh, it will provide a way forward. So we will, um, we, we propose two approaches. One approach will be improving the existing methodologies of that the SS State Statistical Committee applies. And the second one is using innovative techniques to improve, to expand beyond their uh, expand their capabilities. Um, so, and, and I don't want to go to, into details, but these, based on these two approaches, we, uh, we propose um, two methodologies that would help to improve the data segregation in the context of Azerbaijan. These are pretty much the low hanging fruits, which can be done with relatively uh, with current existing uh, structure and capability of the statistical committee, or would require little to, uh, little uh, technical and financial assistance from donors. Um, so, as I said, this will the draft uh, the, the document will be published hopefully in mid to late March. And as we started developing this, we thought this could actually become a part of a, a, a serial publication. So this would be the first publication, and we hope to, if it goes successfully, we hope to publish another one by the end of this year, and if, you know, it can continue further. Um, so I think that's about it for me. You know, like, I think the one we need to conclude is one last slide. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Rasha. This, um, so, um, of course, the um, uh, the list of activities um, are very ambitious, uh, and uh, we cannot maybe um, uh, address all these challenges within the framework of the task force. So, the good news for us, at least, is that we could get the uh, data as uh, one of the sole outcome areas for our new um, uh, UNSDCF, uh, the cooperation framework, uh, which is starting uh, this year. And um, but at the same time, uh, we make sure that all uh, the indicators that at the um, outcome level, they are by default um, chosen um, from the list of SDG uh, indicators and also to make sure that the data is cross-cutting through all outcome areas uh, in our current uh, cooperation framework, which will last uh, from this year until uh, 2025. And um, uh, at the same time, uh, we are also closely working with the government to make uh, the uh, next every edition of the voluntary national uh, reviews more uh, data driven and the next one is going uh, the third one and it will be um, presented uh, at the HLPF uh, this summer and um, uh, another opportunity for us and um, uh, of course, uh, this session is um, a clear example for that, is uh, the availability of the regional and global uh, forums that we can uh, get in contact with the uh, peer um, colleagues and experts and also uh, to learn and share uh, with each other, um, which um, the Global Network of Data Offices and Statisticians is one example and the others um, uh, by um, UNEC or uh, led by uh, regional DCO offices and uh, those also provide us an opportunity to uh, be able to advance um, uh, the, the work we do uh, at the country level with the uh, statistics offices and other partners. So uh, on this note, um, again, uh, I would like to thank you um, uh, for giving this opportunity and uh, welcoming any questions or feedback uh, if you would have um, to ask. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Gula and uh, Rashid, uh, and I'd like to congratulate uh, uh, both of you on this excellent work uh, done on the uh, data statistics of Azerbaijan. And you, I guess, you have a lot of good experience to share. I just saw from the chat uh, from uh, Sally George to ask you: Can you please share with us uh, the assessment and the joint work plan after the webinar? I think it's really good examples that. Uh, uh, 
you can share it with the other countries and uh, uh, colleagues also from uh, the, the resident court and out officers. So congratulations. So let's move on to our uh, next panelist. And uh, the next panelist is uh, uh, Mr. Alamar Gear Hossein, uh, the focal point officer uh, from SDG cell of Bangladesh Bureau of Stat Statistics and Ms. Halima Nayambat, uh, the data management and the result monitoring uh, reporting officer from UN resident uh, coordinator officer in Bangladesh. So, um, so over to you, uh, uh, I guess Ms. Halima, are you going to uh, present first? Yeah, thank you. Thank you Yuki, for uh, giving us the floor and in statistic division for inviting us. So uh, today we will be giving a short presentation, which is we'll be focusing on the Bangladesh context, building partnership for better data for SDGs. So today I am here with my colleague from the statistical organization, Mr. Alamgir Hossein, focal point uh, at the Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics. So I will go through the presentation first and then he will come up with the additional points. So uh, can we go to the next slide, please? Okay, so before going for the presentation, I just want to echo with uh, Stephen that he mentioned data is important. Data is really important. Uh, quality data is important and timely data is important to ensure the SDG monitoring, to ensure the key principles for SDG that is leave no one behind and the whole society approach. In Bangladesh, we are working from the RCO uh, and Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics. So the key partnerships are basically in four different areas. And those are coordination, capacity building, technical assistance, and communications. Can we move to the second slide? Uh, Halima, we cannot hear you anymore. You can hear me? No, now it's fine. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I was heard in the last last uh, slide, or do I need to start start from this one? Is it okay? You can start from this one. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So basically, so in Bangladesh, we have uh, the from the coordination perspective, we have UN Data Group. So the UN data group was formed uh, by the data officials or uh, from the different UN agencies who are, are exist in Bangladesh. So the purpose of the data group, the mandate, I would say, it's basically three key mandates. It's a national statistical support, the strengthening the national statistical capacity to basically ensure uh, the collection, analysis, and dissemination of disaggregated data support uh, the SDG monitoring structure and channel the coordination between government and UN country team activities related to data, and most importantly, support the enhancing evidence-informed policy analysis. So uh, UNRC office does provide the secretariat support for UN data group, and we also have a joint work plan. We have a lot of activities. If anybody interested, we can share that. Can we move to the next slide, please? Okay, on the capacity development, uh, we, uh, we, the, the activity that has been collectively supported from UN and also from the data group and also RCO facilitate is support the Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics on uh, the administrative data methodology development. And also, we also coordinate among the custodian agency who are uh, custodian agency who are involved with their sector, respective sectoral ministries in piloting, supporting, producing data for SDG indicators. We have initiated a project with the support from UN Statistic Division, which is funded by FCDO, which is an SDG monitoring project with the aim that strengthening the collaboration between national statistical system agencies, basically formalizing data, metadata exchange process, which uh, the project will also look into it promoting the use of standardized definition methodologies and data exchange format. May we move to the next slide, please? Okay. 
on the technical, which is a quite a technical assistance, which is a more, we will say that more the engagement here that we provide technical support to the National SDG Data Coordination Committee and also the SDG cell of which is situated in, within the BBS. We also provide support. RC is a member of the, uh, the APEX committee of SDG implementation in Bangladesh. So the guidance is also provided at that level. So, and also we, from the technical ass assistant perspective, we are, uh, we are engaging with the private sector, ensuring the engagement with the private sector working groups on SDG implementation in Bangladesh. Um, apart from that, we extend technical support on national data generation process following the national five-year planning process. Can we move to the next slide, please? Okay. So here I just will not go through it, but this is the some of the glimpse of the activities that UN agencies are doing, which are in a large scale. So for example, the SDG tracker, UNDP is supporting BBS on use of innovative sources, technologies, methods for the streamlined production and dissemination of better, more timely and disaggregated data. Then uh, I just like to highlight during the pandemic, WHO supported BBS in visualizing the impact of COVID-19 on SDG achievement and progress monitoring via COVID impact and recovery management system. UNICEF uh, also supported, which is also replicated in many countries, which is makes uh, a remarkable step uh, towards exploring the spectrum of issues that affect the lives of women and children. Next slide, please. Okay, so here I just want to bring uh, the practical experience, how we support it on the VNR process. So if you look into it, so VNR, Bangladesh participated in VNR 2020, which is the second time they have participated and they have participated for all 17 SDGs. So uh, RCO played a, a critical role, an important role, not only coordinating with the UN agency, the custodian agency within the country, but also coordinated with the development partners. So we did support it, uh, technical support uh, provided to the coordinating ministry in Bangladesh for 17 goals. So there are 17 coordinating ministries. So we, uh, we coordinated our ministries and division in preparing their draft reports. We have tried to support on the uh, part, uh, consolidated comments from the development partners. Uh, there are some of the SDGs specifically we supported with the stakeholder consultation. Uh, we have supported on the amounting to study on SDG progress report 2020 and also VNR 2020 focusing on the environmental dimensions. Uh, we can move to the next one. Okay, so I have already mentioned about the SDG uh, monitoring project. Under this project, we are the highlight of this project. We are going to look into four, four key areas. One is the strengthening the collaboration of uh, national statistical agencies um, through formalizing data metadata exchange process. Improve. We will also look into it after the implement uh, during the implementation. Improve online national repository of SDG indicators and metadata. Engage stakeholders on SDG monitoring through consultation, workshop, meetings. So we have planned a couple of capacity development initiative under this project as well. And we also target to compile and publish metadata for national SDG indicators. To this, uh, we have I have come to end of my presentation. I just wanted to do it quickly so that my colleague Alam Hussain can come in and he can also shed some light on the cooperation and partnership. Over to you, Alam. Thank you. Uh, I, I, I would uh, like to just add two points here. Uh, uh, we are uh, also, we have the uh, partnership with the UNICEF, a good partnership with UNICEF because UNICEF is supporting the SDG cell BBS to uh, prepare the uh, documents, especially the guidelines uh, for the data action plan up to 2030 and uh, how we can go for the disaggregation according to the uh, local requirements. So uh, this is a good uh, and uh, benchmark work for BBS. So we have published a uh, uh, very uh, fruitful and very time befitting publications uh, this year. So uh, we are also getting support from the UNICEF and other, other uh, UN agencies. 
uh, in providing the training on the, especially the administ compiling the administrative data. Uh, not only with the UN agencies, we have a good partnership with the other uh, ministries, intervening ministries, data providing ministries, agencies who are working in the national statistical system. So through the online platform, as is a tracker, uh, all the actors are actually directly involved in this process in implementation and monitoring of the ASDGs in Bangladesh. So uh, all the actors, stakeholders are uh, now in a one shed under a one shed where we are working together uh, with the support from the UN agencies, the civil society, government, and all other stakeholders, even the private sectors. So uh, in Bangladesh, the partnership is really a wonderful one, so which we have made uh, during this last five years to achieving the ultimate goal of the SDGs. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Alamagir and uh, Halima, it's for, for your uh, sharing your excellent experience uh, on working with the different partners, with working with the different uh, agencies uh, on, on the SDG monitors and support of the VNRs. So, uh, we see the SDG tracker, I think it's a pretty uh, well known uh, because it has uh, done a great job. Um, so a, a big congratulations and uh, uh, we also happy to work together on the uh, your uh, SDF CDO project with uh, you. Um, so thanks. Let's move on to our uh, next uh, uh, panelist. Um, we will welcome uh, Ms. Nazira Karimaliva, the head of uh, Sustainable Development and uh, Environment Statistical Department from National Statistical Committee of Kurdistan uh, Republic. Um, so we'll, <coughs> the floor is uh, yours, uh, um, Nazira. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, <clears throat> uh, uh, good morning, <laughs> good afternoon, good evening, dear participants of today's meetings. Uh, I also would like to say thank you, Yondesa, for inviting me to share Kyrgyzstan experience in building partnership for better, uh, better data for AZG with, uh, with, uh, with UN country team and uh, also to share our experience in, uh, this, in the support which we get from um, UNC team uh, in building national monitoring and reporting system for AZG. Uh, next slide, please. Um, uh, first, uh, I would like to emphasize that there is a coordination council on implementation adaptation SDG in Kyrgyzstan was set up and uh, this uh, coordination council includes uh, representatives from different um, stakeholders, including government agencies, non-government organization, uh, statistical office, um, private sector, parliament, uh, and also um, uh, the coordination uh, Coordination Council include <clears throat> representative of UN system and NJZ. Um, but uh, moreover, uh, as uh, last year in 2020, Kyrgyzstan represent its first uh, national voluntary report. Uh, there are five uh, working uh, groups were set up. Um, and uh, to ensure the comprehensive approach to each group and uh, uh, each uh, to each group, um, different stakeholders also were included uh, to these groups. Uh, they are more working groups, and um, the representatives of the UN system also was um, included uh, to this group and uh, participate in discussion and participate uh, from in the whole uh, process of preparing the uh, national um, <coughs> voluntary report. Uh, so. Mm. Um. Um. Another way seem to we cannot hear you. Ah, oh, sorry. And now, um, yeah. Uh, next, slide, next slide, please. Uh, 
so um, actually, um, Kyrgyzstan, uh, as I said, is actively working on implementing an, an implementation and adaptation SDG, and um, we had them. Um, like uh, participation on the in the global groups by ourselves as like IUG groups and in the steering committee of uh, UNSC um, um, and also in the task force of uh, implement, developing uh, climate change statistics indicators, the task force on SEA. Um, here I would like to say like or to emphasize that uh, there are uh, different areas of uh, cooperating with UN system uh, uh, because we get uh, different support at, like capacity building, technical system, uh, also we get a communication um, possible uh, communication um, uh, skills from them uh, and uh, here um, also they participate in coordination in planning uh, process. Um, I would like to uh, give some examples. So, uh, as uh, we start to work on NSDG from the beginning, we have, uh, with the support of UNSD DFID project, we had a statistical capacity assessment. It, it was a very good uh, startup for us because it helped us to understand where we are and what kind of uh, data gaps we have and what should be the uh, next to develop uh, um, the statistic for SDG. Also, we had a MAPS mission, uh, which was uh, which aims to uh, help uh, government to adapt SDG uh, SDG uh, uh, to <coughs> national uh, uh, in the Kyrgyzstan according to the national priorities and, na and national needs. Also, um, in 2018, we had a mix uh, with the support of UNICEF. Uh, actually, uh, this round of, um, of mix allowed us to collect additional 35 SDG indicators. Um, and also, uh, we, we, <clears throat> thanks to the support of UNDP uh, and another uh, uh, UN. Uh, uh, CTT, uh, we accepted a new uh, law on official statistics, and of course, this law allows us to produce uh, data according to the uh, UN uh, principles on producing statistics, official statistics. Um, here, um, <clears throat> uh, it should be emphasized that uh, with, uh, with the support of UNSC and another. Um, uh, UN uh, agencies, uh, we organize global assessment uh, in statistics, which allow us to understand also where we are uh, we are now uh, on the which step of on developing our statistics. Uh, so uh, this uh, assessment allow us to prepare new uh, NDC and uh, I mean a national uh, statistical program of developing and um, for next five years uh, and, and this uh, global assessment is also very good um, uh, how to say, how, uh, a very good uh, tool uh, to to see our gaps as well uh, and our needs um, and uh, <clears throat> unfortunately due to the covid situation we uh, didn't organize our census 2020, but uh, we still uh, on the, uh, the process to prepare it and we hope to organize it uh, our census this year. But uh, thanks to UNIFPA, we get a uh, huge support from them as well to, um, uh, to organize this census. And actually, uh, this census is a little bit different because we have had uh, additional um, questionnaire, I mean, uh, module, which in, which allow us to collect data on disability. So uh, it uh, we uh, it's first time when we can uh, collect data, um, very good data uh, with uh, <coughs> with a disaggregation on disability. Uh, also within the UNSD defeat project, we have managed to. Uh, develop uh, our uh, SDG national uh, reporting platform. Uh, 
um, it's based on open SDG platform and of which was developed by UK and USA and <clears throat> this uh, platform include no, not only data but also metadata next slide please and um, actually uh, uh, we also get the capacity building on um, uh, implementing SDMX format so our data nowadays uh, for uh, data in um, our data <coughs> for SDG nowadays in uh, SDMX format and also disseminated in our platform. Uh, moreover, uh, with the uh, UN Women in Paris 21, uh, we get a pilot um, work on implementing ADAPT tool, which also allow us to see uh, data gaps and. Um, uh, data gaps uh, for preparing SDG statistics. Um, here I would like to say that there are a lot of work uh, which was uh, supported by, uh, by different uh, UN uh, country teams and uh, like workshops, seminars and different uh, events uh, uh, which allow us not uh, allow to increase our capacity as a statisticians, also like a government organization, private sectors. Uh, but um, with uh, all these um, activities uh, uh, still have to be done, uh, as we already uh, um, Present our VNR, but we uh, we but work only uh, our work only started. So uh, as a next step, we are planning to prepare our roadmap on SDG uh, statistics. Also prepare the communication strategy for SDG statistics and uh, prepare our metadata in SDMX uh, format to disseminate in our uh, SDG platform. Uh, uh, here also oh, we have ambition plan to uh, create SDG um, database um, which will be which will work as a NRPC um, backend for our uh, national reporting platform. Uh, so um, it's uh, <laughs> that's all actually. Uh, it's just some examples uh, how we we are working in collaborating with. Uh, UNST in Kyrgyzstan and uh, hope it was useful um, and thank you for your attention. Thank you very much uh, Nadira uh, for sharing the experience of working on different uh, uh, areas on statistical with the, the UN agencies uh, and uh, let's move on to our uh, next panelist. Um, I would like to uh, introduce you, uh, Mr. Mark Herwald, uh, the Associate Director of Division of Data Analytics, Planning and Monitor of, from UNICEF. I think Mark probably is a well known uh, for many of you. Um, so, Mark will share us of uh, UNICEF work with the National Statistical System and with the UN country team on data and the statistical for SDGs. Over to you, Mark. Thank you so much, and it's really great to be with you uh, today. I, I feel like I'm uh, not only surrounded by family and friends, but but also half of my history. <clears throat> I spent five wonderful years as a UNICEF representative in Azerbaijan, and it's really exciting to see all the data work that's uh, that's coming on there now. And um, my second ever field trip for UNICEF was as the first mixed global coordinator to uh, Kyrgyzstan, uh, to the Kyrgyz Republic, and um, uh, to, to run a workshop for the mix, the first round of mix that they did there. So um, lots of exciting things going on. I am standing between you and getting to your next meeting, so I will try to be brief. Um, I am just going to uh, touch on a bit of why we collaborate and partner, how we do so, and for what. So um, from, from UNICEF's point of view, uh, supporting the monitoring of the SDGs is hand in hand with supporting the monitoring of the Convention on the Rights of the Child. And, and we look upon the SDGs as, a, as an expression of uh, the different aspects of the Convention on the Rights of the Child. And, uh, and basically, if, you, if we monitor one, we're, we're monitoring the other. So uh, that's very important to us. At, at the same time, we have to recognize 
that there are a lot of data gaps. This is a, a summary of, um, of uh, SDG indicators related to children and uh, uh, the extent, uh, um, uh, well, I grouped them, we grouped them into, into five uh, thematic areas. And then uh, we looked to see, uh, are countries, um, have countries already achieved global targets? Are they on track to achieve global targets? Are they off track, need acceleration to achieve global targets? Or, and most worrying, uh, are there no data at all? So um, the uh, pale gray, I'm not sure it comes out at all here, and the dark gray, the pale gray means there are no data points for, for a set of indicators. Uh, the dark gray means there, are no, there aren't enough data points to be able to look at trends. Um, so in the whole area of, of survive and thrive, um, uh, there's, there's quite a lot of data, uh, but when we're looking at protection against violence and, and similar issues, even learning, learning achievement, because the SDGs of course pushed us beyond school attendance to, to uh, learning achievement. And apart from the mix, there are very few um, uh, ways that, <laughs> that we can measure that. So big data gaps there uh, and so on. So, um, so the problem is enormous. The need is very great. Um, and, and so what do we do? Well, um, the main thing that we do is is to work with others. So whether it's it's methodological development or innovation, as I like to call it, because methodological development is just what statisticians say. Um, um, so, but but developing new measures, like um, we we recently um, completed a two year uh, set of work to find uh, ways to to gather and standardize and make internationally comparable. Uh, rates on uh, stillbirths, which, uh, which are a rather hidden problem because the data have not been there to be able to look at them. Um, we, we, um, uh, we have global, I um, mean, country by country consultations on the, uh, the data values in SDG indicators to make sure that um, we're fully aligned with countries when we, when we uh, um, uh, make these uh, assessments of internationally comparable data on SDGs. Um, and we work and we work together with with uh, with countries, uh, national statistics offices in particular, but also line ministries with academic partners um, and of course with our, with our UN partner agencies in all different ways uh, on developing these new tools, on developing protocols and, and technical guidelines for data collection and data use. Uh, so um, so this is all kind of headquarters level collaboration, it, it's headquarters and uh, all of those who are practitioners in the field. Um, and we also work for, out of headquarters on helping countries improve data management. Um, we, we work quite a lot um, hand in hand with the, with the uh, UN Desert Project on SDG monitoring, uh, particularly around uh, ways of, of establishing a, a SDMX compatible database uh, to, uh, to be able to not only uh, monitor, store and monitor and display the SDG data information, but to be able to exchange it uh, seamlessly. And of course, we work together with countries, we work together with other UN agencies, we work together with academic institutions on uh, uh, analyses and um, uh, communication around uh, different data issues. Um, but, uh, but but not only from the headquarters level, at our regional level, um, there's increased and, and I think really fruitful collaboration at the regional level with the regional economic and social commissions and the regional uh, DCO, uh, bringing together all of the different UN players. And, and particularly we have a, a strong focus uh, in, in most regions on how we can collaborate better to be able to offer the kind of support uh, that countries need. Uh, and at country level, you've heard <laughs> talk of the mix, I'm the grandfather of mix, um, but uh, this is very much a country focused, this is, this is building capacity and, and, and uh, control of the government over the kinds of uh, household survey data that they, uh, that they collect and use. Um, but also capacity in, in uh, different, measuring different uh, things. Uh, for example, um, we've been working recently on uh, how to make sure that uh, children in institutions are not left out because they, they won't be included in household surveys. So how can they be included in data collection and monitoring? Um, I mentioned about the SDDG database management and display. Um, and one of my particular um, passions is how we can work 
within the UN system and then with all of our partners to increase what I call data savvy, which is the confidence, the competence in and the conviction to use data in decisions um, uh, in government, in, in civil society, uh, within our own organizations. And uh, we cannot neglect and, and we have to, to get a jump ahead of the use of frontier data. That, that's big data, you know, digital exhaust. It's uh, uh, remote sensing, satellite imagery and, and geospatial analysis. It's e-government data. All of those kinds of data uh, can be very fruitful. Uh, they can be very misleading and, and particularly challenging in data poor environments and the kinds of biases that can be introduced by that. So. Uh, that all has to be done in collaboration, in particular frontier data, a lot of collaboration with the private sector, obviously. Um, and uh, my final slide, you'll be glad to hear, is um, really looking to see how we can keep developing these partnerships, how we can collaborate better. And one of my um, uh, recent tasks is to, is to bring together the UN systems uh, offer uh, through multi-country offices to particularly small island developing states. And it became very clear to me that um, our usual headquarters mechanisms are kind of supply driven. They say, oh, what is it that we're doing or what is it that we have or what is it that we plan uh, that could be useful in these situations? And we have to flip that on its head and say, what is the need? What is the demand? And we have to, of course, help inform the demand. Um, but, but we need as our starting point to be able to say, what is it? that this country or this region or sub-region needs and then what is it that we have across the whole spectrum of the UN system which can help to, to fulfill those needs. Uh, and so uh, the network of data officers and statisticians is our wonderful uh, kind of interface uh, between sort of the global view of things and the country by country view of things. Um, and, and a great place to be able to be sharing what is happening, what isn't happening but should be happening, and, and what kinds of things we can offer. So, um, as always, we look forward to continue collaborating. It's only by collaborating we can, we can uh, fix this massive problem uh, of data gaps and data not being used uh, and really make a difference because uh, there's so much to do and uh, too few of us trying to do it. So we've got to work together to do it. Uh, so that's that's all I wanted to share with you. Thank you. Thanks so much, Mark, uh, for sharing the, the UNICEF experience on collaboration at a different level, global, regional and country level, and use the different ways of collaborate uh, with, uh, with different data partners. Also, uh, thanks for emphasizing uh, uh, the supply and also look at the demand from the, the data use. And um, uh, I apologize uh, every, to everyone like, due to the technical difficulty at the beginning, we're a little delayed. So we didn't, we don't have time uh, for the question answers uh, session, uh, this, but we can continue our discussion at the global network and uh, it offers, this is a platform that we can exchange our experience and uh, share uh, and share our views. So I would like to point out that my colleague Alexandra Alaksky and Yushi Zhao are very active and support the network. And so if you have a question, uh, please feel free to reach out to me, Alex and Yushi. So uh, here I would like to thank our panelists uh, um, for uh, their uh, for sharing their uh, good experiences, and uh, we will continue rely on and to build partnership with you uh, continuously. Um, uh, support and data statistics for the implementation of the SDGs. So, I also like to thank uh, for all the participants uh, for joining this uh, set event. Thank you very much, everyone. So, have a good day and continue your other set event of the Statistical Commission. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Have a good day.